just uh, Would you please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning, and welcome to the Parish Eucharist. Gosh, we've got a lot of people in church, all safely distanced, so it's good to see you all here. There's various things which, if you've been viewing us online or have been with us in the last couple of weeks, you'll know that we've got to take very great care uh, with social distancing and also health and um, keeping ourselves safe. And I'll be talking about that a little bit later on when we come to the address. Now, the reading in the Gospel is about five loaves and two fish. So how on earth am I going to weave that into our current situation in the world? Well, I gave it a try. You can judge how successfully a bit later on. So first of all, we bring ourselves before God as we reflect on our own words and our own actions in the world. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are everlasting. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Christ, have mercy. mercy. O keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have put my trust in you. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we Let us pray. 
Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the Gathering Rite has prepared us for our encounter with God's Holy Word, so let us now be seated as the Word of the Lord is proclaimed to us. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord says this, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God bless it forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Matthew. When Jesus heard that Herod had beheaded John the Baptist, he withdrew into a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. 
Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, five, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Would you please be seated. In this year of all years, my children who are graduating from university tell me that my generation had it easy with good job prospects and stable careers to look forward to. Well, in 1981, yes, Ian, I am that old. It didn't seem like this was true when I made my application to the British Airways Graduate Scheme, and it was suspended because of an economic downturn. And even starting work could well have been delayed because of major strikes by the ASLEF, the train drivers' union. One of the things I had to keep up with as an operations graduate with British Rail was the rule book, the sectional appendix, the working instructions and the signalman's general instructions. In fact, every two years I had to pass an exam on the rules contained in these manuals which railwomen referred to as the Bible, ironically, of course, for me now. Rules and regulations have always been part of my working life. However, I had a steep learning curve in 1981 because my family ran their own business. And whilst there was, of course, health and safety, employment law and environmental health standards to observe, they had no real concept of corporate responsibility. My mum often declared that the mantra, rules are made to be broken. As I began my working life, I came to realise how stupid and wrong this phrase was. Working in a safety crit critical environment, I was responsible for the safety of employees and customers, something which my actions directly influenced. In 1988, the Clapham rail accident at about nine o'clock in the morning killed 35 people during the morning commuter peak in the space of about 10 minutes after a technical team wired the signalling equipment incorrectly. On the evening news the same day, only 10 hours after the event, the chairman of the British Railways Board, Sir Robert Reid, a man who had started his working life on the same graduate scheme as myself, but obviously 40 years earlier, made a personal apology and accepted responsibility for the three crashes, the deaths and the hundreds of life-changing injuries. This was a seminal moment for the industry when we all learned to say sorry not just for our own actions, but for the actions of those we have responsibility for, in other words, staff. It taught me about contrition and confession, not just expressing sorrow. And it also punched home the fact that, quite frankly, rules are not intended to be broken. As we move into the second half of 2020, we all have to accept responsibility for the effect our actions may have when we take decisions on how and when we may socialise with people, the way we do the shopping and how much time we spend outside the house. 
These are difficult decisions that require honesty with ourselves about what's best for other people, society and future generations, rather than our own immediate comfort. Now, I do have sympathy with people who live in places where there's little or no outside space, tower blocks and city centre apartments, particularly for those living on their own in isolation. Of course, mental health risks are clearly obvious in these cases. But in this parish, most of us have access to open space. The Gospel reading today tells of the miraculous multiplication of the loaves and fish. The story reveals that the greatness of God is there because we're challenged to look beyond God as a provider of material things for our use. But also the story tells us that we can't demand miracles of God when we find things getting tough. The crowd demanded action and a sign to enable them to believe. The whole point of this story is that faith requires our commitment and when we give that, God provides something far greater than material comfort for all time, not just today and tomorrow. Now, if we can relate the story to our own situation, we'll see that as we're God's agents in the world, it's up to us to do something about social distancing, suppressing the virus and keeping the world safe. We need to be activists in taking responsibility for our health and those around us, as Sir Robert Reed did in 1988. The current situation in which we find ourselves isn't a blip in certain parts of the country. It's a potential and real situation we'll all face if we aren't honest about our actions and our choices. Some have suggested faith leaders should do more to encourage their communities to stick with the new restrictions. Yes, that's undoubtedly correct. But as a Christian leader in a community not so severely affected at the moment, I want you to think twice, three times in the next week before you take part in optional activity. At the moment, we don't know how church will look next week. But when I do know more about the restrictions from the 8th of August, I'll let you know. I would ask one thing. Let's not be judgmental about social distancing restrictions. Let's avoid expressing our opinions on social media and let's limit our social interaction. This has been a longish homily, maybe the last long homily for a while, because I think from next week, I want to restrict the time that we all spend in church. So if it means just a 90 second soundbite, that's the sacrifice we'll have to make to actually keep safe and not to avoid lengthy contact with people outside our bubble. Amen. So let us now declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified, Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us now pray to the Father. Father, we hold before you the Anglican Communion, particularly in the northern province, as Archbishop Stephen begins his ministry to all our bishops in the north. We pray particularly for our own diocese and Bishop Julian and his suffragans, Philip and Joe, that the church may be truthful to its teachings and also be passionate in solving the problems in society and across faith communities. We pray particularly for the diocesan finances and parochial contributions to the work of the diocese. Lord, hear us. We pray for the needs of the world at this time, particularly praying for an end to coronavirus and also for those communities most affected, for the people of India. And we also pray for those working in the hospitality sector in our own country amid calls to shut pubs and therefore save schools from September. We ask God to protect all those who are feeling vulnerable as the furlough scheme comes to an end. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, And we pray for right judgment and corporate responsibility in our own lives. Praying particularly this morning for those who are holders of public office. Pray that they will treat people with respect and dignity, particularly women in employment situations where they feel vulnerable. Lord, hear us. And we hold before God with grateful thanks, scientists, clinicians, doctors and nurses and all caregivers who are working tirelessly to suppress the coronavirus. Pray for those from our own community who are in need of our prayers as we pray for Maureen Dolby, Pauline Rodette, George Gibson, Enid Tootle, Tracy Gibson, Gregory McMahon, Pat Lee, George Stevenson and Gilbert Mercer. Lord, hear us. And we hold before God those who are recently bereaved, those who are feeling acutely the loss of a loved one. And we pray for those who have recently departed this life, as we name them in the silence of our hearts. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. Also pray for those whose anniversary of death occurs this week, naming before you Jack John Trafford. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. And particularly today, we pray 
keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy, in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, just before the piece, uh, before you stand up, I'd just like to highlight a couple of things. The first is, as you know, for over a year we've had a contactless terminal at the back of church for you to make your um, donations if you are not a regular giver through the envelope or the um, uh, standing order scheme. And that's great, but of course it's not been tracking gift aid if you're a taxpayer. We now have a scheme um, integrated into the software that if you register your bank card, um, we will recover the gift aid. So after fees, we're getting 24% additionally on top of your donation. So um, that's a really good extra amount which comes not from you, but from the Chancellor of the Exchequer. And if any of you are higher tax uh, payers, you will actually receive even more back personally yourself. Somebody's nodding wisely and, and knows all the rules on that. Um, now, the way you register is there's a QR code at the back of church next to the terminal. We're not going to do a collection because of social distancing currently, but there will be a retiring collection with a plate. So at the end, if you want to make a donation on the plate, please do. If you want to use the uh, terminal and your UK gift, uh, UK taxpayer, please register your card that you're going to use using the QR code before you make the payment. And I can assure you it works because we've been getting money in this week through additional donations. Any questions about that? Did you all understand that? Yes? You did understand. Of course you did. Of course you did. Pretend you don't, but you did. Now, what else can I say? I'm going to cleanse my hands now, and we, it comes to the time of the peace. Um, please do stay in your bubbles. Uh, don't make physical contact with anybody outside your, your own bubble. Uh, and anybody watching and uh, listening at home, of course, you can do what you want in, in the comfort of your own home. Uh, it's only a good job I can't see you doing it. Anyway, let's stand for the peace. You drove me to that. You saw where it was going and you laughed, so I, did, I put even more in. <laughs> Christ is our peace. He has reconcil reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So in ev whatever restrained way you feel, please offer a sign of peace to those around us.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> Let us pray, brothers and sisters. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, for ever praising you and saying... source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, 
so that we in the company of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God and all the saints, may praise and glorify you for ever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so in faith and trust we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who call to his supper. Lord, Thank you. 
Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you for ever. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. 
May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Some winners from the 100 Club in July. Did you roll your drum at home, Anne? So it was all done in secret and not audited by somebody, the neighbours. Not only do they throw grass into your garden, but they <laughs> take the balls out of your tombola tub. Anyway, you did a good job, Derek, because £50 goes to Doreen Alsop and £20 to Anne Hammersley. Yeah, she's in church. And Jean Downey gets £12. I don't mean, ooh, she's in church, but hey, well done for winning. <laughs> Please do um, keep in touch with us about the changes which obviously are going to affect our worship next week. I don't know how it's going to affect. It's probably going to be masks for you. I'm not sure what I will have to do. Um, and I I'm really not sure about the length of the service because I think one of our responsibilities is to keep as much contact as short as possible. So um, I will be reviewing with the church wardens how we might put that into effect in the next uh, few days. The Lord be with you. Christ, who has nourished us with himself, the living bread, make you one in praise and love and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.